Welcome to Biblical Insights with David Gooding, a Myrtlefield House podcast. When we study scripture, we ask two basic questions. What does it say? Why does it say it? What I'm doing, therefore, is looking for what I would call the thought flow. This is not just a philosophical theory. This gospel actually works. Let me tell God what I think of God. Let God pay for so long as God be mine. In many ways, the book of Revelation is a solemn book with its depictions of tribulation and judgment. But what hope does it offer the human race? What does it tell us about how God will claim victory over sin and unbelief? In episode 7, Dr. Gooding discusses Revelation 12 and the vision of the woman, the child, and the beast, helping us to understand their significance by examining their counterparts in the book of Genesis. Please join us as the lessons of Revelation challenge us to make a choice to be on the Lord's side as we come to appreciate the fairness of God's judgments and the glory of his final victory. What is man? If you want to come to a just view of what man is, you mustn't just confine yourself to looking at him here on this earth. You must first lift your eyes to a higher realm, to the realm of the very heavenlies of God, and see what is going on in those realms. There is God, the supreme creator. And there is that vast personage, finite but vast, that the Bible calls the old serpent, the deceiver, prime mover in sin and rebellion against almighty God. And man, as you now see, has been caught up in a bigger thing, a satanically moved and motivated rebellion against the Lord God Almighty. How long man had been created and put into the Garden of Eden before he was assailed by the enemy of God, none can tell us. But that he was so assailed, we read explicitly told us in the book of Genesis, that old serpent, the devil, See, man was made to be a viceroy, to rule earth for God. And Satan dis- determined to smash man. For his own particular reasons in his own disobedience to the Creator. Ah, but it went further, didn't it? When uh, Satan had induced man to disobey God, and man and woman fell, Then God in his mercy came to them in the garden. And instead of destroying Adam and Eve outright and with them the whole of the human race, God in his great mercy pronounced his disciplines upon them but preached them his glorious gospel at which at this moment we ought to shout for joy. I've often wondered, when man, puny little man, sinned against his Lord, why didn't God smudge out the whole planet and man included? God had plenty of planets and galaxies. Mystery and wonder of his grace is that he didn't squash out man, but said to the woman, first of all, you say, now said he, in spite of the discipline, I shall put enmity between your seed and the serpent seed. Your seed shall bruise his head, and he shall bruise thy heat. First great promise of the gospel of redemption to fallen mankind, that God was going to bring a saviour into this world. That saviour would be the very seed of the woman. Oh, what a marvellous story. God's answer, God's strategic answer to the great rebellion of the archfiend himself. Now man has been temporarily taken across into the power of darkness. But God in his mercy will not abandon him or her either. But through that very woman will bring in the seed of the woman that shall eventually bruise the serpent's head and thank God one day confine him for everlasting in the lake of fire. You say, well, if we know who the serpent is, who then is her child? And who is 
the woman. It's easy to say who the child is, isn't it? Because we are told in the words of chapter 12 that this child, verse 5, is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. The child was caught up unto God and to his throne. There are two of whom these words are stated in Holy Scripture. The first is our Lord. Psalm 22. The Lord uh, told me to declare the decree. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He shall rule the nations with a rod of iron. Blessed seed of the woman. Shall crush the serpent's head and shall rule all all the nation. And again, we find that phrase in the letter to the church of Thyatira, they who overcome, to them likewise shall be given power to rule the nations with a rod of iron. For the true believers in the Lord Jesus shall ultimately share his victory and reign with him. If we know who the child is, then you say, who is the woman? Why, some people have said it's the Virgin Mary, don't they? But this woman was eventually nourished in the desert. I don't think the Virgin Mary was ever nourished in the desert, was she? Uh, nor was she persecuted of Satan for 1260 days at the end of time. So some people have said it's the church. But then that sounds to me to have got things upside down. For how could the church give birth to Christ? If any way round it would be Christ giving birth to the church, wouldn't it? Who is the woman then? And now you must become aware of a bigger dimension. We're not now looking at earth just at the moment. We're looking at things as they appear in heaven. And we're thinking of the great glorious purposes of God in the human race and the strategies of God in the human race. And the first woman to be opposed by the serpent was our great-grandmother Eve in the garden, wasn't it? To whom the promise was given of the coming sea. And who was that sea? Why, for centuries, it was the believing amongst mankind through the godly line of Seth, and eventually God chose Abram and his seed, and on and on went the redemptive purpose of God, eventually to bring in the seed, which is our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, all down the centuries, Satan has attacked that line of God's purposed intention to bring in through mankind, through Israel, through finally the Virgin Mary, if you will have it, the glorious Savior of the world. And I bid you sit back just for a moment. Now use not so much uh, your reason as your imagination. See the great battle of the ages. See the central occupations of the spiritual warfare as it encircles in the heavenly places. See it. And it's about mankind. Where God has committed himself to this human race. And Satan is our enemy and fiend has perverted the human race. And mankind have fallen. All now look at that woman as she stands. And see this divine wonder. She is with child. Can't you see it? Ask, who is the child? The woman great with child. Who is the child? Well, it will be Abel in the first place. It will be Abram presently and Moses and David. Ah, but finally it will be Jesus Christ, our Lord, born of a woman according to the flesh. Veil in flesh, the Godhead see. Praise him, my brother. Praise him, my sister, for this magnificent move in the tactics of God. For when he made man to be a ruler and man fell to the enemy, God himself came in to the very human race in the form of Jesus Christ, his son. It's a magnificent story. And so from then till now, the uh, battle proceeds. Mankind cannot remain neutral. Find itself caught up in this battle. It will have to choose between God and the devil, between the Christ 
and the Antichrist, between the Spirit of God and the beast, the false prophet. There's no neutral ground. But secondly, man cannot become, remain neutral. It is not our fault, is it, that we belong to a fallen race. We must blame that on Adam and Eve. But you'll never be lost because of what Adam and Eve did. By one man's disobedience, yes, sin entered into the world and death by sin. You'll never be lost because of that. The great story is that God has come into the enemy's camp. He's come into this world, born of a woman, to be our Savior, to give us the chance of hearing the gospel and being transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. You say, I prefer to be neutral. You cannot be. You're not neutral to start with. But the Bible informs us that since man fell, man has been in the kingdom of darkness. That's where you are if you are not a believer. Well, walks according to the prince of the power of the air. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. You are not neutral. You are already in his kingdom, who is God's fatal foe. The choice is whether you remain in his kingdom or whether you cross the line and come into the kingdom of God's dear son. That is the choice. We're looking at a war that has gone on ever since the Garden of Eden. And we tonight are interested. We may not be participants in the final battle. That matters very little. The war is still the same war. The same questions are being asked of our ultimate allegiance before God and his Christ. Or is it to remain in the power of darkness? Thank you for listening to Biblical Insights with David Gooding. If you're interested in more of Dr. Gooding's teachings, check out our other podcast series or visit our website, murfieldhouse.com, for free ebooks, sermons, and study notes.